it's this smoke is, is very sickness. We are in Ghana, in Agbogbloshi, a suburb of Accra, once one of the world's largest e-waste dumps. Despite its partial demolition by the government in 2021, many people continue to work here. We went to meet them. I've been doing this for a very long time, around 15 years experience. This is electronic waste. In fact, the term refers to any end-of-life electrical or electronic device. Today, global production of electronic waste has reached a record of 62 billion kilograms. By 2030, it is expected to reach 82 billion kilograms, a 32% increase in just a decade. This can be described as fast tech, meaning we are mainly driven by overproduction and overconsumption of tech objects. I'm staying here. I can show you my room is down there. I can show you. Let's go. Oh, we are living here. Everybody is in bunker is here. Without protection, these workers handle waste under very harsh conditions. They're exposed to toxic substances like lead released when devices are burnt or dismantled. These pollutants contaminate the air, soil, and water, creating severe health risks, particularly for pregnant women and children. While developed countries send e-waste for recycling, 80% of it is shipped, often illegally, to dumps where it is processed in hazardous conditions. Today, e-waste volume is rising five times faster than documented e-waste recycling. We are not criminal. We are here to do what to suffer. Watch our family. That's why we are here. This is my bunker. It'd be hostless. In fact, we are not able to properly recycle all of the e-waste. This is why we need to throw less and reuse more. This means recovering these devices, repairing them, replacing worn out parts, and restoring them so they can be reused. Not only does this prevent them from ending up in dumps like Agbo Bloshi used to be, but it also reduces the pressure on natural resources needed to make new devices.